action. Welcome back to another episode of the van build series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to build a van kitchen. And then at the end of this video, I'll cover the total cost of my kitchen build. When I was looking for a guide on how to build my van kitchen, they were all using fancy tools. They were making confusing cuts. And honestly, I was just kind of overwhelmed. I needed to figure out an easier way to do things. I wanted a place for my fridge, my sink, my gray water tank and some storage. Was that too much to ask for? I pretty much just built my entire kitchen out of two by threes with some plywood and then the butcher block for the top. I opted to kind of leave the front of my cabinet open as I like the sort of rugged, rustic look to it. But enough about that, let's jump into things. The story begins with two by threes. Like I said, I wanted to keep everything in my kitchen build as simple as possible. I wanted my kitchen cabinet to be about 40 inches wide by 33 inches tall and about 23 inches in depth. This is of course not including the counter extension I built which I already covered in another video and I will link that video right I think it'll link right up here. Before you cut any wood, make sure you take into account the size of your fridge and sink. If they're gonna be part of the kitchen cabinet, you're gonna wanna make sure that you size things appropriately. So I started with two rectangles, one for the front of my kitchen and one for the back. This was a pretty straightforward process. I measured out my two by threes, I made some cuts and I screwed them all together. It's important to use your right angle here to keep everything nice and square. However, if you're off by just a tiny bit, it's not the end of the world. As the old saying goes, perfection is the enemy of progress. And we're not just trying to build these vans, we're trying to enjoy these vans. So don't spend the rest of your life trying to make it perfect. After you've got your front rectangle and your rear rectangle, you're gonna want the connecting pieces. To connect your two rectangles together, we're gonna break out the Craig jig and drill out some pocket holes and some additional two by threes. After that, we're just gonna drive the screws in and voila. If you don't have a Craig jig, you could just screw the two by threes into place by driving screws from the outside. However, you're probably gonna need some pretty long screws. And I feel like the Craig jig in this situation will make things a little bit easier and probably stronger. As an alternative, if you don't wanna spend the $15 on a little handheld Craig jig, what you can do is just kinda drill them by hand. You don't need the Craig jig. I would grab a piece of spare scrap wood and just practice drilling at like a 45 degree angle into that thing and seeing if you can get the hang of it. That said, I do think the couple dollars spent on a Craig jig is well worth it. I'll throw a link down below for the cheapo one that I've used for my entire van build and it's worked just fine. Once those connected pieces are in, you now have a frame. Pat yourself on the back and let's move on. Now that I had a frame, I wanted to install some heavy duty sliders for my refrigerator. Unfortunately, I misplaced the footage that I had of me installing my sliders for my fridge. However, I also install sliders for my cabinet and it's done pretty much the same way. So we'll cover the slider installation when we get to the cabinet. After that, it was time to install the countertop. I opted to go for a butcher block here as I really like the look of it, but you could get away with just using some sort of treated plywood. As a side note, I scored my butcher block for free, so that made it even better. So I was at Home Depot looking for a butcher block. The lady told me that there was one on clearance. So I went and checked it out. I said that I would buy it. The manager came and spent probably 30 minutes trying to ring me up for it and she just couldn't do it. And I think she kind of felt bad after making me wait so long. So she eventually told me, she said, I can't sell it to you. So I'm just gonna give it to you and to have a nice day basically. So I scored. <laughs> Anyway, back to it. So trimming the edges off of my butcher block with the circular saw was no problem. It cut right through there like butter. However, when it came time to cut out the hole for my sink, it got pretty brutal. So brutal that I actually burned out my jigsaw. So my plan, very much like when I was installing my roof fan, was to take a huge drill bit. I drilled out the four corners that were gonna be the sink hole. And then I was running my jigsaw in between those corners to basically cut the square out that would then become my sink. I honestly think my technique was fine, but using a jigsaw from the 1950s was probably not my best decision. Honestly, running a jigsaw through butcher block is a time consuming process. You're not going to rush it. And so just take your time and you'll get through it when you get through it. Hands down, it was the most difficult piece of wood I've cut thus far. Once you get that big old square cut out for your sink, you're then gonna drop that sink in and you're gonna trace the outline of where your 
faucet hole is gonna go. For this, I grabbed a hole saw and just like cutting out the square for my sink, it took a long time. It could help to add some oil to your saw blade as it's cutting so it won't overheat. Before we drop our sink in with our adhesive, we're gonna wanna sand down the edges and make sure we treat our butcher block with some oil. I'll link the oil that I used down below, but treating your butcher block regularly with oil will help it stay healthy and pretty much avoid any cracks or degradation. After our butcher block is all oiled up, we're gonna run some screws in from below through our two by threes and into the butcher block to hold it in place. As always, make sure you pre-drill your holes so you don't split any wood, especially any butcher block. We do not want to split that expensive piece of wood. At this point, I attach two pieces of quarter inch plywood to both the back of my kitchen and to the left side of my kitchen. Those are basically the sides of my kitchen that face outward. So if I have my side door open, people could kind of see in and I like the privacy that having that plywood offers. You don't have to do this, of course. You could just leave it open if you want to go full open concept here back to the sink. This is pretty straightforward. If you have a drop in sink, all you need to do is apply some silicone to the uh, bottom side of your sink and then drop it right in. And we're just going to wipe off any excess silicone that kind of squeezes out from underneath that sink. If you have something heavy, put it in the sink just to hold it in place. And depending on what silicone you use, that thing will be cured in no time and it'll be pretty uh, locked in there. After that, you can just drop your faucet in and tighten it right up. I'll go over connecting water lines for the faucet in my future plumbing video. So now that we're on the home stretch, we have to get to the most annoying part of the kitchen build, which is building the drawer. I didn't think that this was the part of uh, the van build process where I was going to lose my cool. I figured that would have been cutting the roof fan or doing the electrical or even doing the plumbing. But honestly, far and away, my least favorite project has been building a freaking drawer. So before attaching my sliders, I had to add a piece of two by two to one side of where the drawer was gonna go. And then I added a piece of one by three to the other side. And I'm just kind of working with the wood that I had available here. If you wanted to do them both two by twos or do both of them one by threes, whatever you feel confident in will hold the weight of your drawer. So I built my drawer out of half inch and three quarter inch plywood. Again, that's just what I had. I didn't have enough half inch plywood to do the whole thing out of half inch. Otherwise, that's probably what I would have done just to save the weight. So building this drawer is a perfect case of measure twice and cut once, especially if you're trying to maximize your space with this drawer. I do recommend having both your fridge and your sink installed first. So then you can kind of just take whatever extra space remains and make that the size of your drawer. Also consider if you are going to follow along with my plumbing video, I do throw a water filter behind the drawer. So you'll want to save a few inches of space, probably about four inches worth of clearance at the back of the drawer if you plan to put a water filter there. So what I kind of did was just took my measuring tape and measured the cube that I had to work with in my kitchen counter here. I took like 17,000 measurements to make sure I got it right. Then I actually sketched the drawer out onto a piece of paper so I could see what the total dimensions were, what each individual piece, what I wanted it cut to, and how it would all fit together. It took a couple minutes, but it was a good way for me to kind of recheck my math and make sure that all my measurements made sense. As far as connecting those pieces together, all I needed was some wood screws and wood glue. When it comes time to attach the sliders, it does take a little bit of foresight. If you do them too tight, they won't slide. If you do them too loose, they'll slide right out. That's why I cannot stress enough the importance of taking your time and making proper measurements here. Your sliders will likely say on the packaging how much space they need on either side. And I think mine might have been either half inch or three quarter inch, but just take that into account when you're building your cabinet here. So one problem I encountered here with my half inch plywood was that the screws I was trying to use were punching through to the other side of the plywood. So I ended up replacing all those screws with real short screws, but this led to a whole different problem. One day when I was driving, my cabinet actually just completely ripped out from those screws and it bent one of the sliders. So I had to pull both sliders out and just replace the set. I ended up kind of redoing my cabinet and replacing the sliders and then just adding new screws that went all the way through. And then I capped them with a washer and a nut. Now it's cinched up nice and tight and not falling out while I'm driving anymore. So that's great. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. Don't use any baby screws. Also to keep your drawer from sliding around while you're driving, you may want to install some childproof locks. Or in my case, I just added a little latch. Looking back, the probably only thing that I would change about my kitchen is making my drawer just a tiny bit smaller. My fridge has really good clearance on the bottom 
and all the sides. The only place it doesn't have great clearance is the top. My drawer comes down to about a half inch away from the fridge. And because of that, a little tiny bit of condensation will build up on top of the fridge. It's likely something I'll have to deal with in the future, but it was such a pain to install that I don't really want to mess around with it at all right now. Definitely consider your refrigerator's venting room when you're installing a your drawer. Another problem that I encountered was that my fridge sliders were a little shaky since they weren't directly connected to each other. So the only other thing that I really changed was I added a piece of two by three just connecting those two sliders and now it's way more stable. Like I already mentioned, I also built a counter extension, but I did a whole different video on that. So I'm not really going to cover it here. Go check that video out if you uh, if you want to see that. It does extend my counter by about an extra two feet. So I really highly recommend it. And that pretty much covers the building process. So when breaking down the cost, I had a few components to factor in. I had the sink, the faucet, the countertop, the sliders, and then the wood that I used. I wanted a really big sink, so I kind of spared no expense here and my sink ran about 180 bucks. The faucet wasn't so bad. I think it was about 50 or 60 bucks. My butcher block ended up being free. So that was awesome, but it probably would have been about $150. I spent about 80 or so bucks on the two sets of sliders. Then for the two by threes, the screws and those odd pieces of plywood, I probably spent collectively about another hundred bucks. All in all, I'd say my kitchen build was about 400 bucks. That doesn't include the fridge, nor does it include the countertop because I got that one for free. If you were to include both the countertop and the fridge, it would probably be about an extra 400 bucks. So you might be looking at about $800 there. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Like I said, I'll cover plumbing in a later video, maybe even my next one. Until then, be sure to binge all my other videos. I'll see you next time, guys. Ciao. <laughs> annoying part of the kitchen, Bill. <laughs> Probably something like, I don't know, peanut butter and jelly. It's definitely going to be peanut butter and jelly. <laughs>